Welcome to Creative Living, where we help you live your most creative life. I'm Jane Manzuras. Now, if you love garage sales or antique shops, this show is for you. We're looking at ways to reuse and repurpose your special finds. But first, let's take a look at what's coming up on the show. Learn how to take an old picture frame and turn it into a serving tray. If you can dream it, they can design it. A wedding planner that can make your wildest wedding dreams come true. And in our next Craft Room Crash, we're recycling wine bottles. And that's something to toast to. That and so much more on this episode of Creative Living. I love everything vintage, antique, and well used. And so does our guest. I am with Wendy, and she is the owner of Remedy Vintage. And she's here to teach us some ways to use those vintage items and repurpose them into home decor. Wendy, tell us what Remedy Vintage is all about. Really, it is a, a means of repurposing and reusing vintage items, um, sourcing them and fixing them and making them functional and, and beautiful. And so that's what we do. And, and it's so cool because because there's really a big trend in yes. that repurposing yeah. um, of old things and making them new again. How did you get into it? You know, I've always loved vintage, and um, from the time I was young, I always loved vintage clothes. Pulled them out of my mom's closet, and I always have used vintage in my home. And so this became a business opportunity to have really a creative outlet for me. Why do you think that people are now interested in these reused items? For me, I think for myself decorating, I love the feeling that it brings. It has sometimes a nostalgia with the item, a sentiment with the item. We live in homes that are really builder grade and manufactured homes, so it brings in a level of character um, and texture to a home mm -hmm. that I think just is a, is a different approach to home decor that I think people are really responding to because of the uniqueness of the pieces that they bring in and, and not have it thrown away because a lot of times these things are just discarded. Yeah. So taking it, repurposing it into a beautiful piece that, um, that has character and interest and a story too. I love the stories. The stories attached to these items are the best part. And, and sometimes when you find a unique vintage or antique item, you kind of see they write a little bit of the story Absolutely. on the back of it because mm -hmm. it, it's so dated. Yeah. The books are my favorite thing because when you go through these books and you'll see handwriting and just even the ink that was used in the in the, yeah. um, the pen, it, it's just you can't find that anywhere. So I love that part. And talk a little bit about the difference between vintage versus antique because I think we get that confused a lot. Yeah. It's, it becomes an interchangeable word that the one thing doesn't always mean the other. An antique really loosely what's accepted is something that's over 100 years old. Oh, wow. So we use antique many times it really is a vintage item. Mm -hmm. um, vintage is 50 years and older. Oh. Now when, it, when you deal with clothing, sometimes within 20 years can right. be considered vintage, right. but really loosely between 100 and 50 years is something vintage. But um, but you hear that word, something that is just old, they'll call it antique, but it's not always an antique. Yeah. You have some great examples here on the table. Talk me through some of these, because I'm loving, I'm loving this piece right here. Yeah, this, this had a piece of salvage that I found that was an old door um, that I love the shape of it. It was super unique and I had, this is old ceiling tin. So whether to call it antique or vintage is hard to say, this would be a repurposed item. So I yes. would say a vintage tin, mm -hmm. um, and then I attach it to the back, and now you can use it for a message board. That's one of my favorites, I That's love that really one. That's really cool, mm -hmm. and I'm loving this too. This is a level. So it's a level, yeah. so an old level. Probably not super, super old, but it has really nice brass detail. I love things that have patina and age and wear mm -hmm. and character to them. So we add some hooks, so we hang our jackets. Mm -hmm. So this is something that is purposeful, rather than, you know, because nowadays everybody's using electronic things even for yes. leveling. They're not even pulling out something that's that's yeah. a, a tangible thing. So it's a reminder of like days gone past of what things were used mm -hmm. and how they were used and it's just kind of a neat reminder to repurpose it. And it doesn't always have to be a big item. It can be little home decor things too. Yes. So I love putting, you put a plan in it is pretty much my mantra for life. So like, you know, Crocs, um, little milk glass, all of the items that you can, so you can see putting some plants in it just to make a purpose for it. Like you see something that has some character interest. Um, I use those all the time and I love flower frogs. Those are like my favorite favorite, favorite go-to. So I have like a green one up there that's an interesting shape. They're great for um, kids' artwork. You can put cards in them. You can put family pictures on the, in them. And they were used to actually put flowers into the, the vase for the floor arrangements. And now we can use them for something else. Flower frogs are my favorite. I mean, if this doesn't give you inspiration, I don't know what does. But you're going to stick around, come back a little bit later on in the show. Wendy is going to show us how to repurpose some old books. That's going to be fun.
Nothing goes better with a glass of wine than some cheese. Well, at least in my opinion. And this craft room crash combines both of them, and I love it. This is Craft Room Crash, and I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, outside DIYer Karen Bruning's house. Now, she says she doesn't take herself too seriously, which is probably a good thing since her nickname is the Crazy Wine Bottle Lady. Let's go crash your craft room and find out what Karen is making today. Hi, Jane. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Karen. I'm so excited to be here. Where's the craft room? It's way out back. Are you ready to get crazy? Let's get All crazy. Right, let's go. <laughs> Come on out here, Jane. What? This is your back patio. It's my craft room. This is your craft this space. This is it. I love to work with glass. Glass is so much fun. Recycling the bottles, making cheese trays, whatever it is, I have to stay busy. I call myself the crazy wine bottle lady. That's because you got a lot of wine bottles. I do, I have a lot of wine bottles. I'm almost ashamed to say I have thousands of bottles. I recycle these from local restaurants that are environmentally friendly and turn them into cheese trays and breadboards and appetizer plates. So this once was a wine bottle? You see the shape, you see the color. It was a 750 milliliter wine bottle. Everyone is different. They're like children. It probably had a red wine in it because it's a dark green glass. And when they melt down, they're unique. So today we're going to make a cheese tray from a recycled wine bottle. I love a good cheese ball and some wine. First, we're going to scrape off the label. Is the water hot enough yet? It's hot. And then I just slowly go like this? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. And it peels right off. From there, we're going to take it to the kiln and melt it down. And all of these coils are going to do all the heating. That's right. It takes two and a half hours to melt and 22 hours to cool down. So it's a 24-hour process. When they're melted and cooled, we'll take the bottle out, and now it's a tray. We emptied another bottle. I mean, you emptied a bottle. I emptied like <laughs> three bottles. I don't know. We're going to put spray adhesive on the back of these stencils. Spray it up, sister. And that's going to affix them to the tray. And then we will take it to the sandblast cabinet. You just well, put the whole thing in there? I put the whole thing in there, and there's a gun. There's a gun? There's a gun. It etches right into the glass. Yep. Oh, like magic. It is. After that, we'll have it cleaned once again. We'll sit down and we'll put some raffia at the top and then we're gonna put little feet on the bottom oh. to protect it from the countertops. And now I had the innie. Right, I got the outie. I, and you got the outie. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Uh, you have the boy, I have the girl. <laughs> and then we'll be able to enjoy it with a glass of wine and some cheese. <gasps> and see, when you put it down, it doesn't make a noise. Thanks so much to Karen. Now we all know how to make a cheese tray from a recycled wine bottle. And that's what Karen is making in her craft room. What are you making in your craft room? I'll see you next time. Thanks so much, this is so great. Can we have some cheese? You may have. Okay, great. Because you're using it. That's right. Stick around, there's more creative living coming up. When it comes to your dream wedding, is it a beach theme? Or maybe something a little less traditional like superheroes? We visit a Vegas wedding chapel that can make any dream come true. And a cute craft that's got my stamp of approval. Having fun exploring community, culture, food, imas with sous vide? Head on over to yourview.com for more videos. I'm getting married this year, and while I'm keeping my wedding pretty traditional, our friends at a wedding venue in Las Vegas say that the sky's the limit when it comes to wedding themes, so we checked out their extraordinary ideas. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for Las Vegas' newest married couple. Well, some people don't want the traditional minister. They just want to be married by their favorite character, musician. <laughs> partner Jamie Richards and I both own uh, Viva Las Vegas Wedding Chapel and I've got some employees that have been with me you know 20 some years. The chapel is big and I love the caddy and the decoration is very nice. We're the only place in the world where you're gonna 
drive down the aisle with Elvis with lasers, lights, and fog. Dear friends, welcome to Hogwarts Chapel. I am Headmaster Dumbledore. And we're pretty diehard uh, Harry Potter fans, and uh, when you look around uh, Las Vegas, this is about the main site that comes up as far as doing Harry Potter themed weddings. Ron's hilarious when he does Camelot or Dumbledore. He loves being that character, you could tell, because in the back office he's always like, oh, Olivia, let me get that paper. Viva Las Vegas Wedding Chapel they exceeded our expectations in terms of presentation and customer service, everything was just fantastic. <laughs> You can tell they love they love what they do here, and, yeah. it, and it shows. We are the only place in anywhere that does a gothic wedding, or a graveyard wedding, or a zombie wedding. <laughs> I just think that Elvis is really cool. <laughs> yeah, he was really cool, yeah. and uh, the whole thing, everybody that worked on this, until they put time into it. So it's yeah, really. And the live streaming, that's awesome. Because yeah. like, we didn't bring anybody down, and so people could share. Yeah. So that was cool. Very good idea. <laughs> With the sets and props, uh, the more stuff we add, it just it, it makes the theme that much better. When, when we do a gothic wedding, we bring out a big coffin out, tombstone. So in between weddings, we have to be uh, decorating, tearing down, setting up. You promise to love, honor, and cherish each other. Always speak the truth in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. Good answer. It's just been really pain-free, easy. Uh, we did the uh, marriage planner online, didn't even have to talk to anybody, just chatted real quick and everything turned out the way we wanted it to. Ladies and gentlemen, a nice round of applause for Las Vegas and go very well. They had a, a, a great ceremony and our Elvis was, was fantastic too. I can't believe I like danced on my wedding day. Yeah. <laughs> So if you have something in mind or you think it's crazy, just call us and we'll make that dream come true. I'm just glad I got to marry you here. I'm married here. From the Grim Reaper. I know. And so till death. Till death. Yeah. For this next story of inspiration, I went to Wisconsin to see how a group of ladies are using their time and talents to help mastectomy patients. The Knitted Knockers organization has over 500 groups in all 50 states, and one of those groups is in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin at a Ben Franklin craft store, where the goal is to connect crafters with a cause. Knitted Knockers are an alternative to a prosthesis for women who have undergone a mastectomy or have had other breast issues and need to have some replacement augmentation. I am a cancer survivor and so I know what it's like when women want something to make themselves feel normal. A knitted knocker starts with some knitting needles and some yarn. Every stitch made here at the Knitted Knockers Group helps a breast cancer survivor, one knocker at a time. I love to knit and I love to crochet and I love to make things for other people. Today we'll be taking some knockers to Fort Healthcare's Healing Breast Care Center. It's a really remarkable place for women to undergo treatment and recovery. Just for them coming in here and showing all these colors and all this hard work that went into making these and the ladies are knitting and crocheting and they know that these forms are going to be going to somebody who can use them. Each breast cancer survivor who receives a knitted knocker feels a sense of sisterhood that comes along with it. Definitely a sisterhood bond when it is my sister. <laughs> the people that came here and brought the knitted knockers, yeah, it uh, was a bond. Being able to receive these knockers from the ladies that have made them, they really make them feel whole again. They, they bring these forms, the, the funny rainbow shapes, the special colors, and they'll wear these and they're all of a sudden they're standing up tall again. I certainly would recommend them and at least to try them. It doesn't cost anything to try them. With over 50,000 mastectomies in the United States every year, the Knitted Knockers organization will continue to brighten and improve the lives of so many women.
Coming up on Creative Living, a few old books and some stamps, and you've got the trendiest craft for your home decor. Plus, got an old picture frame? Don't throw it out. I'll show you how to turn it into a serving tray. We are back with Wendy from Remedy Vintage, and she's going to show us how to make a cool new craft. Now, Wendy, book crafting has been popular for the last couple of years, really in book folding. Yeah. But you have another idea that we could use to repurpose our old books. Absolutely. Why is book crafting so popular, do you think? The feeling you get from books, there's a nostalgia attached to it, whether it be the history of it, the, the content. but. The look of books, and especially in what we're going to do today of having a neutral palette for books, a deconstructed look for the book is becoming very popular. Yeah. And adding the personalization, people are responding really well to because they can put any message that they want attached to these particular books. And not only is this good home decor, but probably a really great gift. Excellent gift. Okay, so what are we making? Because I see it all out here on the table. Okay. I'm excited. So we're going to take some books that we are going to deconstruct. Okay. So we're going to choose our book. Mm -hmm. And I like to choose books that, like you can see here, it has some water staining, it has some damage to it. Um, it maybe has a color that isn't right. as popular. Right. But what I love looking at the books is I love this edge here too. Like you yeah. look at the edge and how pretty that, that look is. That's what I kind of, wow. I take the book and I look at the color, content, all of that. So you choose your book. Uh -huh. And for you, if you want to do two books or three books, I'm going to do three books because oh. I'm going to do, okay. um, I'm going to do a three book stack. So I like to make them kind of even to make sure okay. the books that I put. I'm going to try that one. Oh, that's a shorty. Yeah. yeah. So we can that's kind okay. of, so like this could be the bottom. And then oh yeah, there's, I just love them all. Yeah, so we can pick like these three. Yeah. For for the book I'm gonna do, you can okay. pick what however many you want. I'm you want do three one. or two. Do you want to I, just do two? Uh, no, I'll do one. Just do oh, one. We're doing book stack. We're gonna do stacking, so oh, you can stack fine. the book. And even I'll if you two. have one word, yeah. I like the look of having two books stacked, just to bring a little bit more texture. Um, I'm gonna do these two because I like the way this is flat. Okay, beautiful. Right? Is that okay? That's perfect. Okay. It's whatever you want it to be. Okay. You're I'm the scared boss. Scared to rip it apart. I know. And it, you feel in in terms of what we're doing, we're gonna make it better. Yeah, of course. So we're, we're gonna, gonna make, make it, it better. better. So I like to open it like this, and I like to look at both sides mm -hmm. to see what am I gonna be. Mine's already falling apart. See, it's already falling apart. Yeah, and that's really kind of the yeah. idea behind it. Okay. So we want to make sure we have a blank page. I like to make sure there's a blank page mm -hmm. just so that it has like a pretty clean look. So we're going to pull this sucker off. We're just going to do this. Just like that? Yep. Yeah, mine like came that. off really see? easy. See? And then look how pretty that is. So this has uh, like, you see all the age, you see yeah. all the crusty glue. I love this. You see all the binding. The this binding. is the perfect book. Good. Because now you have this paper. Yeah. So when we do our stamp, it's perfect. Oh. So that's like gold. Oh, perfect. good, good, good. So now we're going to stamp, and I would suggest you're going to stamp right there on yeah. your paper. So we're going to put this book aside, and then we're going to get our stamps. Okay. So I'm going to choose the word home sweet home. Okay, and I'm going to go Jane. You're going to go Jane. Okay. So when I do my stamping, I'm going to start with my home, <clears throat> my H. What I like to do, I like to make sure I don't get any ink on this edge. Mm -hmm. So I like to kind of look from the side and I like to just graze it from the side so that I'm only getting the, and see how I have like a little bit in the uh, corner? Yeah. I have a little rag that I'm gonna actually take that off to make uh, sure that it's a clean stamp. Mine's perfect. You did a good job. Thank you. Good job. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we get plenty of ink loaded there. Yeah. Then we're gonna stamp. So we're gonna take it. And I kind of, again, use my side view here to know where to gauge it. And it's going to be cattywampus, uh, and that's okay. It may not be even. That's kind of the look that's of okay. it. So, so then we're going to stamp. Go. Yep. So then I just stamp it, and I do a little wiggle. Just kind of wiggle right, back and forth. Right, because the book is Because it's rounded. Sort of curved. Yeah. So good work. So there you go. Oh, yeah. So that gives you kind of a faded out, vintagey feel. Yeah, we're yes. going to get the word on there. I'm going to get Jane. You're going to do Home Sweet Home. Home Sweet Hall. So I line up the side here. And then we're going to wrap it up with some um, twine. Yes. So then you can choose. So I something really popular is kind of a farmhouse look with yeah. like the jute and with a little gray stripe. Um, this is like a more ro like romantic shabby yes, look with the ribbon, with the flowers, romantic. really pretty. And then I love just jute. You know, I have yeah, a large guy, yeah, yeah. and then the guy. I love that you use the proper term, jute. jute. And then it's going to end up looking like some of our fabulous yes. books over here on mm -hmm. display. Yes. What a great idea, it's Wendy. Fun. This is so much fun. Let's finish our books. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. What a great craft. Thank We're all going to try it. And for more information about Wendy and Remedy Vintage, just follow her on Instagram. Coming up on Creative Living, spruce up your next dinner party with my picture frame serving tray.
Next time you invite your friends over for a dinner party or afternoon tea, wow them with this upcrafted serving tray made from an old frame. These are great to use as table topper decor, a showpiece for your next party, or even a great handmade gift. Let's get started. You'll need an old frame, fabric scraps, pinking shears, drawer handles, an electric drill, and a screwdriver. To start, take apart the frame and remove the old photo, matte backings. Give the glass a good cleaning and discard the photo. Or you can use it for another paper project. Save your scraps. Using your pinking shears, cut a piece of fabric just a bit larger than the glass and set it aside. Now measure the sides of the frame where you want to put the handles and drill the pilot holes. Screw the handles to both sides of the frame, and to finish, layer the fabric on top and then secure the matte backings. Flip it over and voila! This upcrafting project is a great way to give new life to an old frame. A frame that will probably never hang on your walls again, but now it's a serving tray fit for fine dining. Thanks again to Wendy for that great book project. Now if you're looking to pick up some vintage items, here's some quick tips. Learn to negotiate properly. Start by asking the seller for their best price. Know what you're willing to pay for the item and then meet somewhere in the middle. Check out the item thoroughly. Most sales are as is, so be sure you really examine it for any damage that can't be repaired. And finally, once you get it home, read about cleaning it. Some items don't need to be cleaned or they lose their value. If you're planning on refurbishing it, check out how to do that properly too. Happy hunting! Thanks so much for joining us right here on Creative Living, where we merge everyday life with imagination. I'm Jane Monzuris, and I'll see you next time.